In the story of Jacob and Esau, after Jacob and his mother deceive the father, Isaac, into giving Jacob a blessing that was reserved for the oldest son in that culture. And Esau comes in not later and there's a trembling in Isaac's voice and he says, who's the person that actually brought me the, the food that I ate? I gave him the blessing. The statement's made beginning in verse 41 of chapter 27 of Genesis. Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father blessed him. Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand and then I will kill my brother Jacob. As soon as my father's dead, my younger brother's going to die. The words of Esau, her older son, were told to Rebekah, so she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said to him, Surely your brother Esau comforts himself concerning you by intending to kill you. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice, or I flee to my brother Laban in Haran, and stay with him a few days until your brother's fury turns away, until your brother's anger turns away from you, and he forgets what you've done to him. And then I will send and bring you from there. I'll bring you back home few days. Jacob actually works for Laban for 20 years. Rebecca never sees her younger son again after he leaves. Deception can have a very high price. And as Jacob leaves to go to his uncle, there are some interesting things that happen along the way. But the, the items that we've talked about previously still exist. The favoritism, the rivalry, cunning, deception. In the dream that he has on the, on the way on that journey, there is a, a statement that God makes to him. This is what he remembers. Where God says, I am the Lord, the God of, your, of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Your descendants will be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and the east, to the north and the south, and in you and in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. The next morning when he wakes up, the statement that he makes, because Jacob makes a vow, but listen to the content of the vow. If God will be with me and keep me in this way that I'm going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. Scholars have been arguing back and forth for a very long time about the implications of this statement. Going back to the original Hebrew, is it, the sta is it really the, the aspect of bargaining that you see that's the way it comes across. And if that's the case, it's not uncharacteristic for Jacob. He's bargained before. We've seen it. That it got him in trouble with Esau to begin with. The deception, really, that actually was a plot that was hatched by his mother was something that he actually went along with readily. Deception, bargaining, something in that personality that really is not positive. But this kind of idea, if you do this, God, if you do this, if you do this, if you do this, then you'll be my God. Is that the way that loyalty is actually determined? In a, in a partnership, relationship, in some kind of business, well, if you as my partner do this, do this, do this, do this, then I'll be loyal to you. But if not, I'll stab you in the back. The problem, this misguided devotion, is something that is very much a pandemic in our culture and around the world, perhaps, but definitely you see and hear about it every day. Misguided devotion. In chapter 29, beginning in verse 16, Laban has two daughters. The name of the elder is Leah. The name of the younger is Rachel. Jacob falls in love with Rachel and makes a contract that he will work with Laban and for Laban, his future father-in-law, for seven years just to be able to marry Rachel. When that day comes, when that wedding takes place, verse 22 of Genesis 29, Laban gathered together all the men of the place and, and made a feast. Can it pass in the evening that he took Leah, the, his daughter, and brought her to Jacob? And he went into her and, and in, in the verse 25 in the morning, behold, it was Leah, not Rachel. 
Now, whether you, you start thinking about the culture of the day and, and the heavy veils that brides would wear in some of those cultures, for whatever reason, Laban deceives Jacob into marrying the older daughter, not the younger daughter with whom he was in love. And when Jacob complains, Laban says, well, it's not our custom to marry off the younger daughter before the older daughter is married. The deceiver himself becomes deceived. Now later on, there's, a, there's another statement that's, that's made indicative of some of these problems that you find in the life of, of Jacob. When he prepares to meet Esau, finally leaves after 20 years and goes back to where he grew up. And as he's getting close, he's talking and thinking about what happens if Esau actually attacks. And in verse number 9 of chapter 32 of Genesis, Jacob says, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said to me, Return to your country and to your family, and I will, I will deal well with you. And then some of the statements follow, but it begins with recognition or statement that the faith that I possess really I've never embraced as my own. It's my father's faith. It's my grandfather's faith. He really never characterizes it as his faith. Now maybe that's another side. Maybe that's just a statement of humility that I am so below where I need to be that I can't even acknowledge you. That would be a positive movement in that kind of mindset that's been a very, very selfish up to this point in time. In fact, selfishness seems to kind of rule in the heart of, of Jacob. Favoritism, rivalry, cunning, deception seem to be old, as old as time itself. You know, what we see in our, in our country around us today, favoritism, rivalry, cunning, deception. You would think, would you not, that humanity could elevate itself beyond those things that have been so negative all through humanity's history. And yet if people do not recognize and understand the lessons that need to be learned in history, they will be and they are being repeated. Interesting story. When you just skim the surface, there are a lot of other details in that story of the life of Jacob. Please stay safe. We'll talk again soon.